Hello everyone, my name is Adam Johnson and I'm the Lenticular Design Specialist here at Virtual Images. In this video, I'd like to walk you through the appropriate steps in setting up a file for the lenticular 3D effect. A layered Photoshop file is our preferred format. Files can be supplied in Illustrator and InDesign, but please make sure any Photoshop support files are fully layered. If a layered file is unavailable, we can work from a flat file. For example, if your background image is a photograph, we have the tools to separate out the individual elements and still provide you with a dynamic 3D piece. However, in this case, we ask that any type or logo still be provided separately or on separate layers. So now let's get to the basics. Our minimum resolution is 300 pixels per inch, and our minimum bleed is 1 8 inch outside of the trim size all the way around. In this case, the white line represents the trim size, and the canvas shows the minimum bleed. One important thing to remember that ultimately makes our jobs easier and allows for a quicker turnaround is that when supplying a file for 3D, do not crop the final image. Leave all imagery that bleeds off the canvas in the file. An example of this is shown here. If I expand my canvas about an inch on each side, I still have image showing. Though not a specific requirement, having extra image area on the sides will allow us to increase the amount of depth in the final product. These guides shown here are set up to 1 8 inch in from the trim line, and this is the required safe area for all type and logos. Anything that runs outside of this area runs the risk of being cut off during the final finishing process. As I mentioned before, layers are the most important part of a 3D file, and when it comes to layers, try to supply as many as you can. We can work with 10 layers, 100 layers, or any number of layers, but the more layers means more depth in the world of lenticular, so let us do all the merging on our end. The composition of your art also plays an important part in achieving a solid 3D effect. In lenticular, the busier the better, and though something may look busy as a flat image, once we separate those layers out in the 3D space, the end result is amazing. When we talk about 3D composition, we can break it into three parts, background, focal plane, and foreground. In this case, the starbursts and some of the leaves form my background. The logo and the main character form my focal plane, and these extra leaves here will form the foreground. The focal plane is where elements stay in focus. We usually reserve this area for type, logos, and any elements in the piece that need to maintain maximum clarity. Because type works better when left on the focal plane, try not to lay it over elements that will be pushed into the foreground. In this example, these leaves will make for a nice foreground element, but by dropping this quote on top of them, you create a visual conflict that will look unappealing to the viewer. A better choice would have been to place it somewhere where it won't interfere with any depth elements. Because most files supplied to us are intended for standard printing, we would be happy to offer suggestions to help increase the effectiveness of your art as a 3D piece. For the background, try to use complex images or textures, avoiding solid colors, gradients, and most of all white. White looks great in standard printing when you want something to pop off the page, but in particular, you get the adverse effect. It actually makes your image feel flat. For foreground elements, keep things simple. In this case, the leaves will work well and provide a nice range of foreground depth. Just keep in mind, the more you want us to bring something forward in 3D, the softer the image gets. So as mentioned before, we prefer to reduce the amount of 3D in any critical imagery, like this main character or these little supporting characters. If I move them too far into the foreground or push them into the background, they will tend to soften up. Finally, let's discuss some type choices and sizes. Our minimum font size is 10 point if you want it to remain fully legible under the lens. On some of the finer lenses, we can get away with 8 point, but I wouldn't recommend going below that. Try to avoid thin or condensed fonts, like this for example. And if a condensed font must be used, try to adjust the kerning to give the letters a little more breathing room. When you are supplying a file for a 3D lenticular piece, feel free to call out how you want your layers positioned in the 3D space. This makes for a helpful guideline when we set up our 3D scene, especially if there are any important elements that need to remain nice and sharp. And that about covers the basics for 3D file prep. These tips and more can be found on our website virtual-images.com. And please don't hesitate to call us with any questions or for a consultation because our goal is to provide you with the best lenticular 3D products we can. Thanks for watching.